In this COVID-19 crisis, how we live and how we cope with dying are changing. Collectively, we feel anxious and overwhelmed. In this episode, my guests will share tips on loving, living, and dying during COVID-19. And that's what's next. Welcome to What's Next. My guest is Jane Whitlock. She is a death doula, and her passion is to be a guide for others as they navigate their way through this new step in life. And so thank you so much for joining me, Jane. Thank you for having me. This is uh, interesting for me because I'm not familiar with what death doulas do. So how did you become a death doula? Well, um, I... Well, I used to be a, a middle school soccer coach um, and social studies teacher. And then my husband got sick with kidney cancer and he was ill for about four months before he died. And I was thrust into this world of being a caregiver for someone who is dying. And I had no experience with what dying looked like, how it happened. Um, and so I just felt really ill prepared, even though I was in hospice and he was totally medically supported, I felt uh, ill-prepared is the only way I can say it. Then I found out later about end-of-life doulas and I thought, wouldn't it have been great to have somebody who was calm, who had experience, who could explain some of these things and prepare me for what was going to happen and help me sort of um, individualize the experience so I could support Rob in a way that felt supportive to him. So that's why I became well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, now you're able to go and, and meet with families as they find you. So you belong to a couple of groups and they put together some great questions, some great tips, and also some answers for folks uh, to embrace. So uh, we'll start with question number one. I'm feeling anxious and overwhelmed. And you've told me earlier that we are all grieving this new time. What do you mean by that? Well, I think that um, we are in this unprecedented time where all of us are grieving at the same time. And we're grieving different things, the loss of independence, the loss of our child getting to experience their senior year, the loss of jobs and livelihood, the loss of creative opportunities that we have been working for, as well as the loss of loved ones. So grief is overwhelming and anxiety producing. So David Kessler, a grief expert, describes grief as um, anxiety is poorly expressed anticipatory grief. So if you are feeling anxious, I really want you to name it for yourself that that is what you were feeling is grief. And grief demands us to slow down and to take our time and to be quiet and to create rituals where we can uh, create space for these feelings so we can feel them and and very very slowly grief is a slow slow process um, but it will transform you so I encourage people to be open to that and give them self-compassion is really important right now well question number two that I've seen a lot of on Instagram it says I know someone who is dying but I can't physically be present with them what can I do this is heartbreaking uh, for all of us, the person, the people who are dying and the family and friends who cannot be there to support them. Unfortunately, most people, the dying people cannot be on Zoom. They cannot be on phone calls. So they are really isolated. So what do we do with that as caregivers and family members? I would suggest that you create a, like a Zoom conference that can be a virtual support group with your friends and family where you create a ritual. Maybe you listen to their favorite song together. Maybe you all make their favorite meal and you have a dinner together. Maybe you all create home memorials with their photos and candles and, and you share your grief. Talk with other people. That is a really great way to nurture your own grief. And you know, traditionally, there's the one person who's grieving and they're surrounded by people who don't understand. Well, actually now we are supported by people who do understand. People were all feeling these same things. Question number three, which I don't know if they will encounter that too much in this state, but it could be happening in other states. And it's, what if my loved one dies at home? I've never been around a dead person, so what do I do if they're home longer than I anticipated? 
Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, right. So the, we're not a culture that spends a lot of time with the person after they have died, but there are cultures where it is entirely normal. So when, if your person dies and you call the funeral home and they say, oh, you know what? We can't get there for 12 hours. Your response is to not panic. This is totally normal. Death is not a crisis. Get a cup of tea going on the, on the oven stove and um, take a seat and just catch your breath. And then think it's really healing for our grief to spend time with the body of our loved ones. So in normal times, we'll do a body washing and we'll express gratitude for every part of this person's body, their hands, their feet, their head, their mouth, all the thing, gifts that, that it's really a gratitude um, expression. But in these times, it is necessary to take some precautions. So if you are, they, they don't know how long the virus lives in the body. That's the primary concern. So if that concerns you, no problem. Just shut the door and you can sit and wait. They're, they will not, they're not a threat. The dead body is not a threat. The problem might come if they are moved because if they express air, the virus might be in that air. So you'll want to wear a mask and gloves and normal protective gear, but you could, and put a mask over the, the dead person as well. Um, or you could um, use antibacteria soap and, you know, in their mouth and their nose to just destroy the virus there. But then you can sit quietly and hold their hand and you can continue talking to them and being with them. It's not, it's not an emergency, okay? So just relax and take your time. Another question that I've seen a lot, I've been told that I can't have a funeral or memorial service right now. So what do we do? Right, so that's another um, complication to our grief at this time. We, we're used to having the person die and in short order being able to have a funeral or memorial service to get some you know, closure. I, I, I think it's just a good way to start the grieving process, but now we have this gap, an unknown gap at that. So what do we do during this time? The Buddhists, and I really like this tradition and I recommend it to all my clients, is they create a memorial space in the home where you have a candle and a photo and some flowers. And every time you pass that, you wish the person's spirit well on their journey, or you just sit down with it and you can talk to them and you can write them letters and you can sing them songs. Um, there are ways to nurture your grief, even though you can't be with the person um, and, and you have to wait. I also think planning the memorial and funeral can be a very healing activity if you take your time. So you can look at that as a grief activity. And finally, uh, who can help? You're the number one person. So I want to have you uh, tell us where, if they want to contact you, how can they do that? And then who are the other groups that you also recommend? Okay, uh, you can find me at deathdoulajane.com and I'm also a founding member of the Minnesota Death Collaborative, which is a really great resource of professionals around end of life. So celebrants, um, spiritualists, doulas, um, home or bereavement organizers, and then Minnesota Threshold Network is a longstanding local group that will traditionally sung people across Threshold. They do a lot of end of life um, education and Devination out of Mankato and Brighter Days Grief Center is um, a grief resource and Twin Cities Death Cafe. All right. All kinds of great resources if we're living here in the state of Minnesota. And if you're watching this from another state, you can go to the links that I'm going to post below uh, as well. Thank you so much for joining me, Jane. I really appreciate this. Thank you for giving me the opportunity.